Hey, have you guys seen Daddy? No. no. Hey, Adeline, uh, have you seen Daddy? Uh, no, I think he's outside somewhere. Okay. Hmm. Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. Hey. What you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Get rid of this pig. <laughs> do you think that our friends are going to notice that we have seen the sun? <laughs> well, so that shows you we made it south. <laughs> Doesn't mean there wasn't some excitement along the way. Oh, yeah, and I don't know if I would call it excitement. Not the good kind of excitement. <laughs> <laughs> so we hit the road and I think that whole like the first few hours, every bump and sound and everything, you were like super aware. Like, is something wrong? Is something wrong? <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, I spent days going over the excursion, the camper, all like I put airbags in the excursion, did a whole bunch of different stuff, reset the distribution hitch up. And so, yeah, every little thing, every little movement, are you kind of checking like, do I need to make adjustments? Is it all good? And so we made it like four or five hours down the road. Things were going pretty good. Uh, we were leaving pretty cold temps in Minnesota. Yeah. And what was your goal? My goal was to get out of the freezing cold, get to where we could stay in the camper overnight, turn water on without it refreezing that night. Um, Cause we knew that the first day we weren't gonna get somewhere that we could camp in the camper cause it was just gonna be way too cold. Yeah, so we planned to stay in a hotel that first night yep. and so, we're driving and it, it, it was about four or five hours in, you noticed something with the exhaust wasn't going quite right. Yeah, I noticed that like when I'd come up a hill and it would build a bunch of boost, I would let off the gas and it would like poof some white smoke out of the tailpipe. And I thought, oh man, <laughs> So then <laughs> we go back home? And I could tell you were aware of something and then finally I'm like, okay, what is it? And you're like, watch out. It was because it's on my side in the rear room here. He's like, is that, is that white smoke coming out? Yeah, I was like, is it white smoke? Is it blue smoke? Because it was, it was really mild at first. Yeah, it wasn't noticeable. And then it was like all of a sudden, it was just like a huge cloud of white smoke whenever you blow up. <laughs> yeah, so I had just had some work done to the excursion. Excellent mechanic is who I took it to. So I called him and I'm like, hey, here's what's going on. Here's my temps, here's everything. And this is kind of what my gut is. And then he told me, the I think three other things that could have been a couple of them pretty huge things and I was like I really don't want it to be those things yeah so you got off the phone with him and so then you're trying to pay more attention to diagnose mm -hmm. it you're having me google things while we're driving yeah I had a pretty good gut check as far as what it was I just needed like confirmation yeah to know that us continuing to drive wasn't going to wreck anything right so that night we got to the hotel by then you had narrowed it down you thought it was the EGR cooler EGR cooler, yep. And so the next thing then was to find a mechanic who could uh, get us in quickly. And so you started like that whole night and then the next morning you're just making phone calls and you couldn't find anyone local. Uh, we were in Missouri at this Somewhere, time. Somewhere, yeah, Southern Missouri, I think. Everybody was a minimum of four days out. And we still weren't somewhere warm where we could just set up camp and then right. hang out there. That was the That was the biggest thing is I didn't want to have to park the camper in a sub degree weather, stay in a hotel, rent a car, and have the excursion fixed. That just, I didn't want to do all that. So what we did for the next day solid was every hour uh, I would add, I stopped and I'd add two gallons of coolant and water yep. every single hour. Cause it was just pumping it out the tailpipe. And you had called ahead, you did find a mechanic that said he could mm -hmm. get it in the next day. So we had seven to eight hours, well, seven to eight hours without these frequent stops yes. to go to get yep. to this place yep. where we could set up camp, it was warm, and this mechanic said he could get it in the next day. Yeah. And so the, that was the thing too, is that I wanted to find a shop that I trusted. So Google reviews, 
their websites. He wanted it all. He just wanted to, everything. Well, no, you don't want to take it to somebody who has no reputation with a six pono power stroke. Because then this guy's like, yeah, I could get in the next day. And then Tom's like, well, and I'm why like, can't oh, he get why? in the next why day? Why is he so available? He must be horrible, <laughs> okay. right? Why isn't he three weeks out like everybody else? Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> but so, yes, every hour on the hour, we put... Two gallons. Uh, once we got further south, I just started dumping straight water into it because yeah. we were literally pushing it right out the tailpipe. And so that was a stressful drive. <laughs> You're watching the transmission temp and the, well, I don't know, all the different temps. So we made it to the campground. Um, we got set up. Well, that was the other thing. Then we're calling for campsites and it's like after six o'clock. No one's yeah, answering yeah. the phone. But I didn't want to make a reservation ahead of time. Yeah, we didn't know if we were going to no, We stuck. didn't know if we were going to make it there or not. So then finally, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Clara, nobody's answering their phone. No campsites. Finally, uh, we found a campsite yeah. and we got set up for the night. So the next morning, we went and dropped it off at that mechanic. Yep. So we got it dropped off. He said, so that was a, th a Thursday morning. He said, I will have it done by 5 o'clock on Friday. And we're like, well, it has to. Otherwise, we're stuck here the whole weekend. Yeah, for the weekend. whole weekend. And we had to get a rental van back because there was some big event in town and like there was yeah. no rentals. Yeah. Um, and so, and we were like, and we've heard this before when we dropped your truck oh, off sure. with the transmission. So we got it dropped off, head back, uh, headed back to the campground. And then we still had another problem waiting for us uh, back at the camper. <laughs> well, apparently you have to winterize your camper before winter. <laughs> I did not. It. I mean, I kind of did, but I did not do it completely. So when we hooked the water up to this, I expected um, a leak of some sort somewhere. I brought a whole lot of tools to fix pretty much everything on this camper. So, so what happened again that broke the toilet? Okay, so we bought this camper in the summertime. It had water damage. We fixed the water damage. We camped with it one time, and then I put it in the shed. I may have bought uh, some vehicles that I started playing with <laughs> and we're doing a garage and a deck and a playset and all kinds of things. Um, and so I just totally ignored the camper, forgot all about it. So we got a leak from the toilet. So I'm going to take it off and, and, and we got a part and I'm hoping I got the right part and we can just replace this little thing and be on our merrily way. Okay. You don't sound like uber confident with something. Oh, no, it's not that. I just think, like, let's just not use the toilet. Let's just use the toilet. <laughs> yeah, all right. Luckily, I mean, camper toilets are fairly simple. Yeah. Oh, super, okay. Super simple. <laughs> Well, and you didn't tell me you were worried about all this. Tell well, until you had hooked up the water. You're like, okay, you stand by the toilet and you watch that so closely. And if anything leaks, the incident starts leaking. You I tell me so off. I can turn the water off. And I was like, Tom, like. Well, but see, okay. So, so Corbin was by the toilet <laughs> and he yells, leaking, leaking, leaking. <laughs> and I could hear him crystal clear outside. So yeah. shut the water off. Yeah. So we went to the store. Uh, you didn't realize there was actually like a part number on it. So you just no. got one that looked close. I, and right now the kids are outside playing soccer with a pine cone. Life's good, man. Living yep, the dream. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Minimalist. Give them a pine cone, they'll spend an hour. <laughs> yeah. So we still didn't have um, the toilet fixed. And that whole first day he, that we're waiting for the truck to get done, he had said he was going to call you and it was like 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and we still hadn't heard yeah. anything. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, is this going to be a repeat of last year? So he hadn't called, and then I feel like we were having the conversation. And I'm my like, phone just ran. call him. And Tom's yeah. like, well, playing it cool. Like, just call him. <laughs> and then he called while we were talking about it. Yeah. And so he confirmed that what you thought was wrong. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, absolutely. Your EGR cooler is gone. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I was like, okay, so just by, like, when do you think you can have it done? <laughs> he's like, oh, it'll be done by the end of the day tomorrow which was Friday afternoon, is what he was saying it'd be done. I'm like, all right, cool. Yep. So uh, we were enjoying the campground. It actually was like uh, across the road from the beach so we could walk to the beach. It wasn't warm enough to go in the water, but the kids had fun playing in the sand. And then we also got to test out the camper and some of the changes that we made to it. So we'll tell you the, what we did that we really like and what we did that we don't like. So mm -hmm. why don't we, we'll start out in the bedroom and the changes that we made there and we'll talk about those first. So probably the biggest change we made to the camper was here in the <laughs> master bedroom area. So uh, it had that really typical layout where 
um, the bed was oriented the other way. Mm -hmm. And then there was one of these cabinets on each side that Tom and pulled out above. and a thing above, which I don't know, it made it feel a little bit claustrophobic, but okay. So two things about this, the mattress and then the storage. So let's talk about the mattress first and then we'll talk about what we like about the storage. So we got an inexpensive bed in a box because we didn't want it to be too heavy, right? Everyone's always like, don't add too much weight to your camper. And we thought, you know, we're only out here like, I don't know, what is it, a month a year yeah. in a camper, probably? Like, probably a month a year. Like, we probably don't need that nice of a mattress. Right. So Tom had actually said before we left home, because we had slept on this mattress for a weekend, and it didn't go great. Like, no, it was terrible. We felt like very old, old yeah, individuals. Yeah, and you realize how important sleep is. And so yeah. Tom had said, uh, we've had our Helix mattress at home for six months now. And we really like it now. And Tom said, I am gonna take our Helix mattress out to the camper. I actually talked him out of it because it may be a mattress that comes rolled up in a box, but that Helix mattress is solid and it's it's fairly heavy. And so I said, don't do it. I don't want you to hurt your back. Yep. And so instead what we did is we left this piece of junk in here and I've been hurting <laughs> my back every day we've been on vacation. So this is where I say Tom was right, I was wrong. <laughs> And we, I mean, we have not been sleeping well, and I do regret that Yeah, now. well, and I mean, to be completely honest, like when we got the Helix mattress, I did not like it. It took about like, a month to six weeks. I didn't like it at all. And then it's like, it magically broke in. Yeah. And like, we did the walking out and all that yep. stuff. And I'm super particular about what we sleep on. Yep. And like, yeah, I love the thing. Mm -hmm. And the first couple nights on here, we're just like, Whoa. I was ready to drive back home <laughs> to get it. Like, if we didn't have bigger issues, like with the excursion at the time. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think the first morning we woke up here, I said to Don, so you sleep like crap too? Yeah. <laughs> and so Helix is a premium bed in a box. It gets delivered right to your door. Shipping is included. Mm. If you follow the link down below, you'll get up to $200 off your mattress. We yeah. have the Dusk. So you go online, you take their quiz, and it tells you what's a good fit depending on how you sleep. Are you a back, stomach, side sleeper? And then your preferences. So we like ours just a touch firmer, and that's the Dusk. And then we have the Pillow Top, which is awesome. I really like that. And so, uh, like we said, we had it for six months. It's It's been awesome, but they have a 100 night sleep guarantee. So if you would have an experience like this one, which I don't think you would, you just call them up and they take care of um, everything to, to take we, it back. Sorry, and we had an experience with a very high-end bed before our mm -hmm. Helix bed. Yeah. That we tr we tried to make it work for, what was it, like a year oh, and a yeah. half, two mm -hmm. years? And then once you have a good mattress, you're like, why did we do that to ourselves? <laughs> and that's kind of what we're thinking now in the camera is like, mm -hmm. darn it. So we'll put a link down below for that. Again, you can get up to $200 off. But the other thing we did in here, which was Tom's idea, um, was we put these drawers in here underneath the bed. So we took out some of those upper cabinets, um, but we put these drawers in from Ikea. Do you wanna back up a little bit, Tom? A little, this is all I got. Sorry, <laughs> okay, it's still not a big bedroom. We love them. Those drawers work awesome. So Tom has four drawers, I have four drawers, and that works out great. So I think we really like the changes we made to the bed. Yeah, and what was crazy is I like so I'm believe it or not, not the not the big minimalist of the group. <laughs> and so I was like, dude, Don, we have to put shelves in here. Yeah. So that we can put more clothes in here because we just need more clothes. Yeah. And then I brought all of my stuff out to the camper. And I didn't even fill all four. I was like, <laughs> Drawer storage is just so functional. Mm -hmm. And so we won't even show you inside that cabinet right now because it's a big mess. No, it's, it's backpacks. <laughs> it's backpacks and jackets and right sweatshirts. now. And yeah. sweatshirts, yeah. So we are going to actually add more shelves to that when we do yeah. get back home. But otherwise, um, it's been functioning really well. I know two people had said, Dawn, don't you get like claustrophobic because I sleep on the inside. Um, and I think it's, I don't know, it's... I don't, which I would normally get a little bit claustrophobic. I think because this doesn't go like to the whole end of the bed, it's it's easy for me to like crawl on and off. I don't know. It hasn't been a problem. So I've I been- I think there was one night where you said, you need to get away from me. I feel claustrophobic. Yeah, Tom was getting a little too close. So I was like, okay, just like scooch over a little bit. But other than that, um, as long as Tom doesn't get too close to me, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, right, so there's no problem here whatsoever. <laughs> And then the other major change we made was 
putting in a full-size couch and taking out the dinette mm -hmm. and well i'll say what my opinion first and you can say your opinion on it don't hate it i love it <laughs> this is the best especially having this small table that we can put here in front of the couch we can use it in the kitchen like we put the air fryer on it the bigger table usually just stays in place mm -hmm. and then all four kids can actually fit at it um so often they'll eat there we'll eat here or we'll use the table to like do some work or play a game you guys are sitting on the, the little table right now i think it's awesome i love having the full-size couch because the old couch was just like a love seat so we couldn't all of us i mean all of us don't sit down here now but you couldn't fit very many people so i like having more couch space and then that it's not so bulky having these tables and stools compared to the dinette so that's my opinion okay now tom can share his okay so i'll go straight into the negative because yep. dawn didn't <laughs> the tables we had said that people asked do we need to ban down the tables and chairs or the tables and the couch make sure that they don't move while we travel nah they won't move yeah that was wrong they totally move mm -hmm. um i am kind of a crazy driver though so that may be part of it <laughs> uh the tables move around the couch drifts a very little bit hasn't done any damage the tables have done some damage some scarring to the walls yeah um which we'll fix um, how about functionality though? functionality i like it all right and so again we had some downtime uh while we were waiting for the excursion to get done so <laughs> here is how tom filled the time I would be curious how many people's husbands do these type of things on vacation. I kind of hope a lot, but I'm guessing not. <laughs> All right, so if you've ever done this on vacation, would you please let us know? All right, you want to show the boys what you just went and picked up? All right, you want to see what we got oh, in, what did you get? in our <laughs> rental van? Ready? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, those are gigantic. <laughs> okay, wait. Look at the size of Gage compared to it. Wow. Well, the reason is, so this was my sales pitch to my wife. <laughs> the excursions on mud tires, which are super loud when we travel down the road. And they, uh, they're loud and they, it has 18 inch rims and really tall sidewalls. And so they're kind of like unstable. Like you kind of feel it kind of wonky and around. <laughs> so we obviously went with a bigger tire, uh, a 20 inch rim and a- So shorter sidewall, shorter even sidewall. though it's a bigger tire. But these are all terrains. So it's a smoother tread. So it should be a quieter ride. Okay. And, uh, and, these were, and these were a stinking steal. Like at home, I would have paid more for the tires on these rims than the whole set. So Corbin, what are we going to do with the wheels that are on the excursion right now? But they're on the beast. <laughs> they're going to go on Corbin's truck. Yep, they're going to go on your truck. <laughs> yep. yep, good job. Which are bigger than what's on your truck currently. The rims are bigger and the tires are bigger. <laughs> and they're mud tires. <laughs> so, which is totally up a kid's alley. <laughs> So hopefully the excursion's supposed supposed to be done by five o'clock today, and then yeah. if that happens, you're gonna try and swap these out right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I brought everything. I can do this right here. So All then right. we'll. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. This is vacationing with Tom <laughs> right here. <laughs> yep. Do awesome. um, you want to add anything else? All right, hold on. I need to defend myself. <laughs> I found the set of rims and tires that we purchased for like almost half the price of a brand new set of tires for the other wheels and so i thought well i mean it's I mean, you cheaper you could it's not cheaper. do it right um but then the thing that i failed to think about was <laughs> we have an excursion not a truck uh where are the extra set of tires gonna go yeah so we look pretty redneck right so now. they're on the roof of the excursion <laughs> right now <laughs> my parents are on their way as well <laughs> with and a truck yep. so, so they, we're hoping they don't know this yet but we're hoping oh they're them totally home. taking them home for us yeah because <laughs> yeah because they're on the roof of the excursion yeah <laughs> anyways speaking of excursion here's what happened next all right this is a big day excursions back home and the parts tom got to fix the toilet they were the right parts after all, we found out. So we went back to the store. Who would have known? <laughs> so. They actually looked at me, um, so I returned them. 
I returned the parts and then they brought the parts back to the parts counter and then I brought up my serial number and the gal looks at me and she goes, why, why are you returning this? <laughs> I was like, well, cause I wanted to get the right one. She was like, this is the right one. Nice. All right. So not only do we have the truck back, we're also going to have a fully functioning restroom restroom tonight it's a big Daddy. day big not day. that we need a fully functioning restroom <laughs> we don't we're actually not far we'll show you there's the bathhouse so we've been using that as well so hasn't been too bad reminds me of my childhood <laughs> so we got the toilet fixed and we got the truck back by five o'clock uh, we Friday. actually got the truck back at like a little after three he called and said it was all done i was like ah are you sure <laughs> But it was done, I test drove it. And yeah, we hooked that thing up to the camper right away and hit the road. Yeah, so uh, so far it's been working well now and uh, the camper's been working great. I think, I mean, it's still a little bigger probably than you would like to be pulling all over oh, absolutely. the place. But when we're, once we get into a campsite and we're parked, it's been functioning awesome. So we really like the changes we made and, mm -hmm. and everything else about it. Well, and we've just been finding out about everything that's been going on in Texas. And so we just want to say we're so sorry for anyone and everyone without mm -hmm. power and all the water damage. It's been remarkable. Yeah, I couldn't imagine the volume of damage that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one thing for Tom to forget to winterize our <laughs> RV toilet and fix it with a twelve dollar part. Yeah, it's I mean, different when it's like an entire city's of yeah. all their plumbing and electrical. And, yeah. Yeah. So know that we're thinking about you if you're in Texas or any of the other states that have been affected. Like Tom's just like, oh yeah, we're sitting in front of a pool. Like, <laughs> I'm like I don't know that we should have a pool. We're like a yeah, time. super nice area, but um, but we have been thinking about you and um. I was reminded too, there was a, earlier there was a gentleman in the pool and he, they had been staying at the campground for seven weeks and he, they had young kids and he was like, yeah, the kids have made a lot of friends and then they leave again, but then new friends come in and he said, I've met so many nice people and he's like, I, I've just been reminded that there's so many good people out there and I think that's what we continually feel as we've been traveling at the campgrounds is that you get to a campground and you're surrounded by friends. Everyone comes up, they wanna know where you're from, how your traveling's been going. Super nosy. How long are you staying? Like, yeah, Tom's just like, why do you wanna know? Huh? Walk away. Why do you wanna know? This is my stuff. <laughs> no, everyone's been so friendly and so willing to help too. Like if, if you have any, if they even get a hint that you have like any kinds of problems, they're like, what I can would... we do to help? Did we? So I was actually fixing a U-joint underneath the excursion the other day. Uh, and I bought a, a clamp to press it out. The clamp snapped in half. I, anyway, Tom's hit me very in the strong. Head. Yeah. So I ended up pounding it out with a hammer, which makes a lot of noise in a campground. And so I was like trying to take my time to be really quiet. And I got it halfway done and a guy comes over and he's like, oh, you sound like you're having troubles. And I'm like, no, I'm just really trying to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that neighbor. And I know you'll come, everyone will come and ask to help if, yeah. uh, if you hear me yeah. doing that. So. I think that's been, yeah, one of the highlights of our trip so far too, is just feeling like everyone's super friendly and helpful mm -hmm. and kind of restores your hope in people too. Yep. So uh, we're just gonna uh, keep camping now and hope there's no more of that kind of excitement with the excursion and yeah, no, um, of kind of just hang out and relax and enjoy the rest of our time away. Yeah. Anyways, we hope you have a great weekend. We hope all your projects go well. We love you and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.